What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. This is TW Motorsports and today, yes, we are working on the old 54. Now, so for one thing, as you can tell, I'm obviously dressed different. Um, I don't know what's going on, but the weather has been crap here lately. Cold, rainy, and we've needed the rain, but man, it's really made it a hard time for me to get stuff done. Obviously, we're still working on the shop and guys, some exciting news is the concrete guy actually showed up and uh, so the floor is about half finished but until it's finished i i don't want to put anything on it so we're just still plugging away out here in the driveway and when i bought this thing so when i originally bought this 54 obviously you guys know how i feel about black wheels if you've been on this channel very long and none of the stuff that i have has black wheels anymore so uh this was going to be no different i knew i was going to change wheels so that is what we were going to do today but uh, with that being said, when a lot of people build these, um, they use a S10 rear end because the rear ends in these are kind of like a torque tube, so they're all sealed off. There's not actually a drive shaft that's exposed. So when they upgrade to a different motor like this LS, this 5.3, you have to put a different rear end in because the original rear end will not work. Well, a lot of people source an S10 rear end, uh, and that is what this guy did. The downside is there's three different sizes of S10 rear ends. There's a two-wheel drive, there's a four-wheel drive, and then there's a ZR2 and uh, the ZR2 is a little too wide and what is in it is a two-wheel drive which is a little too narrow so because of that uh, that is pretty much why he put these wheels on here is because this is the only thing you could find with this odd offset you can see the they're really pushed in and um, so we need to bring them out now there's two options here and I'm going to exercise one that's not my favorite but it's the easiest way to do it right now and down the road I think I'll put a different rear end in this thing but we are going to be using adapters or spacers as they call them now these actually bolt on they're not ones that are just plates and uh, we'll talk a little more about those in a minute but we obviously have got some new wheels and they are stacked up right here you can also see that I took the wheel off of my old truck this is a 20 inch torque thrust 20 by 8 and I test fit it so I could kind of get an idea. I knew that the front, uh, what size I needed in the front, I did test fit it in the front, but I also test fitted it in the rear. And uh, the only way I could do that was kind of set it up on a block, have my son help me hold it, and then try to measure for spacer size. So we're gonna hope that I pick the right size because according to what I've calculated, um, that's a 2.5 inch spacer, which I know is big, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna to need to be between a two and a half and a three inch spacer. So I ordered two and a half. I probably should have ordered three as well, but we're gonna jack this thing up and then I'll show you guys what wheels we're gonna go with. I think what we'll do is we'll start with the front because I know they're gonna fit right away. And then I may just have to cut this video short if the back ones don't fit, but let's get the front off the ground. I got my jack over there. We'll get the jack, some jack stands under it and get these front wheels off. on their tight. So while I'm in here, I'm gonna just make sure that everything's tight as far as um, upper and lower ball joints. And um, I'll cut the camera off for this, but just making sure that everything's tight. I don't see any loose bolts anywhere. I've noticed that this brake was dragging the other day, but I think we're good now. 
seems to be good. So let's go grab the new wheel and we'll talk about why I chose this one. So no surprise, I went with a five star design wheel. Um, so guys, I really, really like the torque thrust wheel. I think the torque thrust wheel looks good on any car, but because I have it on my Trans Am and my old truck, um, I really didn't want to put it on this. I did put it on and take a picture and I'll show you right here. So as you can see, that looked pretty good. But like I said, I didn't want to put the same wheel on everything. So what this wheel is, it's a Riddler 695. And uh, instead of doing a 20 in the front, I decided to go with an 18 just to give me a little bit additional sidewall. And this thing does rub a little bit lock to lock when we're turning. So I didn't want to, ch you know, I, I, I really like the look of the 20, but I felt like I'd sacrifice a lot of ride as far as in the front. And like I said, the turning. So uh, eight, 18 by eight, I believe yeah 18 by 8 in the front uh, tire size 255 45 18 and uh, I think this will look really good on this thing um, I did a Photoshop kind of of what it would look like but let's get them on and set it down and step back and take a look I'll just show you guys a time-lapse uh, until we get to the back and then we'll talk about the spacers You might have noticed that I couldn't get my um, 17 in here. So you gotta get a cheapy, uh, I've got some cheap deep sockets. And so I'm having to run it down with that just because there's not enough room around to get your uh, the actual impact socket in there, which is pretty common. I've had this before. You could get some different lug nuts, but these lug nuts look pretty decent and they fit. So we're gonna use those for now. Oh my gosh, what a difference. So you have to be crazy to not think this looks better. I mean, it does kind of look, my son kind of thinks it looks like Doc Hudson with the black race wheels on it. And I might keep them around just for, um, you know, I don't think they're worth anything really. They're really cheap wheels, but I think it looks really good. It, it fits perfect. Uh, the tire size is good. It's just a hair taller than these, maybe by like, probably not even a quarter of an inch, but wow, just looks better. So let's see if we can get to the back. Before I do that, let's slide these bricks under here because this thing's gonna wanna roll forward because my driveway slant. I don't have any of my stops. They're all keeping my truck up there, my Trans Am in place. Normally I have these little rubber chocks and they work better, but. Let's get the back off the ground. We'll talk about the spacers, how to bolt them on and uh, see if they actually fit. Now on these older cars, things are a little bit more difficult because um, you can see the wheel arches aren't cut out to where you can just slide the wheel straight in. You kind of have to feed it up from the bottom. What I'm hoping I don't have to do is loosen the shock in order to get enough clearance to get the new wheel in. I think I can get this one out. I did the other day and I actually didn't drop the axle, but we're just going to have to see. We're going to pop these off and then we'll go grab the adapters. So here's what we've got. And uh, I'll list all this stuff, of course, like always down in the description below, guys. But this is a 
Titan wheel spacer. And uh, why I chose those are a couple reasons. You can buy the cheapies off eBay, but I ride my family around in this and I don't want to risk them breaking. And this is a solid piece of billet aluminum. It is also hub centric. So what it means by that is you can see this sticking out in the center. It completely lines up with this. I purchased them for an S10 rear end. And so it lines up nice and doesn't have any movement. The problem with you get you get with spacers is if you took off really fast or the wheel started to spin, it could turn. And then if it does that, you could potentially shear the lug nuts off and buy, you don't wanna do that. I've had a friend that's done that and uh, had a bad wreck. So you do not want to do that. Um, so kind of how this works is you take these guys off. This is what bolts it to the actual hub itself. So we're gonna put this thing on and um, we're gonna tighten these up on the actual original lug nuts. Now, if it, depending on, you'll need to read the instructions depending on what um, thread pitch you have, but on this, which is a 12 on 1.5, just a stock S10, and it is metric, um, you need to be able to get six and a half turns on a lug nut. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to mark them and then run them down, making sure I can get six and a half turns. If you can't, uh, you're gonna have to put different lug nuts in. So we're hoping that's another thing I don't have to deal with is obviously putting different lug nuts on. So, or lugs, sorry, not lug nuts. But if we can't get six and a half turns, we're gonna have to do that. But ultimately, what you're gonna need to do is put this in place and then we will, I'm gonna have to have a pretty deep extension and I'm just gonna have to look in there with a flashlight and count how many times I can thread it around. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So we got a nice smooth mounting surface to start with. No dirt or dust or debris or anything, any loose paint. Um, you know, the smoother they set, the better off you are. You don't have to do this, but I don't know, maybe I'm just crazy. One little piece of dirt could cause it to vibrate or something, or a big chunk of dirt that might've snuck behind the wheel. Cause these mount pretty flat. Now we can put them up in here, up in place. Now once I get it started, I'm gonna mark it on here. There's actually a mark on my, well, there's one. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so we're gonna be good guys. I still got quite a bit more to go. I just wanted to make sure before I put all of them in place that I had enough thread. I actually counted each one of them just because, you know, you wanna be safe. In case one lug nut for some reason was shorter than the other and didn't get six and a half threads, I would have pulled them out. It would have sucked, but I had to take the axles out probably just because I like to press them through. I don't like to pull them through with the lug nut. There. And three, it kind of sucks that these aren't metric like the actual lug nuts, but I can deal with that. So now we're gonna go grab the torque wrench and we're gonna try to torque them down. Uh, it may be kind of cumbersome just because you're gonna have to try to hold this at the same time you're torquing it. I'll probably get a pry bar to put in between the uh, studs here because I don't think we're gonna be able to torque it down. And actually, before I even do that, let's go grab the wheel and see if it fits up in there because there's no sense in torquing them down if I have to go to the three inch spacer. So for the back, let's talk about real quick before I try to sneak this up in there. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, the back I decided to go with the 20 by eight and a half. Um, these things on my truck, on my old truck, I have a 20 by 10, but there's just not very much room in these actual fenders. A majority of your um, width comes from this piece that I would call it hips on this car. Um, you just can't fit a ton of wheel under there and this thing isn't mini tubbed or anything I wish it were because then we could put a real fat wheel back here, but tire size 265 35 20 uh, About the same width as the tire that I took off and uh, I am running extra tires I just I like the look of them and they were reasonably priced and they weren't junk. So I've had them in the past. They're just Kumos and um, I I really like them 
anyway like I said 20 by eight and a half in the back so let's see if we can uh, feed this thing up in there like I said it's a little more cumbersome on an older car because of that uh, the fender isn't radius I have to get a little higher off the ground. I got it quite a bit higher off the ground. Uh, also added a couple jack stands up here uh, because we're just short on the back. So I've got the jack and I've got four jack stands under just to try to be as safe as possible. Now maybe we have enough room to swing that tire up from the bottom side. I'm really hoping I don't have to take the suspension loose. Woo! So as you can see, I got it in there and actually guys, three inches would have been too far. There's not a ton of room right here. There's like a kind of a plate. And so that is perfect. It's not too far back. It's not too far forward. I lucked out guys. So I did a little better measuring than what I thought. So let's take that back off, even though it's a pain. And then we'll talk about torquing down um, the actual adapter and that's something that you have to do multiple times but we'll talk about that as well so to torque these things I'm gonna go to um, 100 foot-pounds and it's really based off manufacturer specs obviously this is an s10 so I'm going off of what I normally do on an s10 you don't want to go over 110 because you might risk cracking this so I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down to 100 foot or 100 foot-pounds and you can see I've got a couple lug nuts. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to be using this as leverage. I didn't want to mess up the threads. So we're going to go ahead and torque these down. Now, with that being said, you do need to retorque these. So you need to drive about 25, 25 miles, take the wheel off, retorque these. If you have any loose ones, uh, you need to probably take note of that and torque it probably every 25 miles until you don't have. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them bolted down and then obviously we'll take it down the road and um, make sure everything's good, jack it back up, take the wheel off. I know it's kind of a process and it sucks. I really wish it had the right rear end in it, but that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna torque these, we'll get the wheel on and uh, I'll just time-lapse the other side. So the last thing we need to do uh, before we take it out on the road is I need to torque the wheel. So I'm gonna torque the wheel to the plate at 100 foot-pounds. Like I said, don't go over 110. And I'm gonna go all the way around because I didn't torque the fronts either. So let's get them torqued and uh, we'll step back and look at it and then we'll go for a drive. So 
so I figured we'd walk around it real quick before we took it for a ride. It is down on the ground. And what it's amazing what wheels do for a car, guys. You, I, I, I'm so excited. I'm speechless. It's just, oh my gosh, it looks so much better. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take it down the ride and make sure we don't have any vibrations from those rear spacers because that's a common issue that people talk about when you put adapters or spacers on the back. Um, I will say the fronts are a little bit further sunken in. Hope I don't have any more problems turning. I don't think that I probably will, but uh, they do set in just a hair more than the other ones, but oh my gosh, you can't argue with the results, right? So I'm gonna go grab the keys and let's run down the road. So it's the maiden voyage here. And so there's a couple things obviously we're looking for. We're looking for um, any rubbing when we're turning, which we're gonna see real quick here, pulling out of the driveway. And then we're listening for the rubbing in the back because it is kind of close on the fender, on the outer fender. No rubbing there. And I don't know that I'll be able to put 25 miles on it today just because of the weather and I've got other stuff I gotta do, but definitely guys, make sure you're checking those after you go at least 25 miles. So I, I've i driven uh, maybe six blocks now. No issues that I've heard. So we're gonna get up to uh, 70, 80 miles an hour. This is where it would be nice to have a seat belt just in case something went wrong. Uh, but we're gonna, there's no seat belts in a 1954 Chevy. I need to put some in. We're gonna get it up to speed here and see if we got any vibrations. I don't think we're going to just based off of what I'm driven so far, although it hadn't went over you know, 20 miles an hour. Probably should roll up the window. I will say it, it acts like it handles a lot better just in the one corner I've went around. Of course, it was pretty slow, but... Okay, that's 60, and it seems to be really smooth no vibrations that I had didn't have before and I know it's probably pretty loud in here guys sorry but that is exciting let's get up to 70 same thing at 70 no vibrations when you use quality parts guys usually you don't have issues so guys, we're back at home and everything went great. So we didn't have any rubbing in the front. As a matter of fact, I think I have more full turn, so lock to lock turning than I did before because before those tires were so bulgy that they would rub on the inner fender, which wasn't a big deal. I would I could still navigate in the parking lot, but these being sunk in a little bit um, have drastically improved that. And as for the back, um, I didn't hear any rubbing. You know, I said it was really close to the fender um, back on the back side here closest to us, but no issues whatsoever I hit some pretty good bumps when I was doing that 70 mile an hour run and um, No issues and no vibrations, which is awesome because like I said guys, I'm not a huge fan of spacers But you know, sometimes you got to use them especially with stuff like this. I think eventually like I said um, I'll source another rear end off an s10 and uh, this looks like a good width so i think i'll be able to go with this which is good because it'll give me something to measure off of to get the right one but i didn't get 25 miles on it as as i told you because i just don't have time my son's playing basketball and i've got to get ready i came out here this morning to do this but um i don't know guys let me know what in the comments what you think i think that um i would like to get it a little bit lower in the back which may need some uh massaging on the inner fenders especially in the back now on the front i think we're good there but i'd like to go maybe as much as another inch all the way around maybe an inch and a half in the back is what i would like to eventually do but for now um wheels make a car guys i think that you can look around and see that at this house um those wheels look great on the c5 these wheels look great. As I said, I really like the torque thrust, but I didn't want torque thrust on everything since I have them on the Trans Am in there. I got them on the old truck. If I end up doing something with the two-door Tahoe, which probably will happen, I think I might do a torque thrust style wheel. It's just an unbeatable, timeless looking wheel, guys. And so uh, I know a lot of you guys wanted to see some Detroit, Detroit steel wheels, but um, they're special order. And so as I may do that down the road at some point, 
I needed to know a size. I didn't, they're, they're, one, they're a wheel that if you have them custom made, you can't just send them back if they don't fit. So I really needed uh, to get the measurements right. And I think I've got them now. So if I do decide to change wheels down the road, I can just use this as a jumping point. Cause the other ones, I didn't know anything about them because I didn't buy them and uh, the offset in the back, all, it was all weird. But anyway, like I said, guys, go down in the comments and let me know what you think. Um, if you think this looks worse, I'm not sure that, um, that you're like anything I do on this channel because to me, this this just makes this thing look so much better and uh, try to disregard all my junk there piled up in the garage. I know I'm, I'm getting close guys. We're gonna be in the shop soon. Hopefully I have a video updating you and maybe moving some stuff over there. But if you like this video guys, like always, please smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed guys, go down, hit the subscribe button. We got a ton of stuff going. And uh, hopefully, like I said, once we get in the shop, things will start to snowball. I'll be able to work at night and uh, rain won't bother me. Uh, cold weather won't bother me. So uh, look, looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. So once we get in there, things are really going to start rolling. So while you're down there doing all that, guys, uh, make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell icon. That notifies you every time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.